Hi, welcome to Science Stories Through Indian Art with Rohini. The art in focus this week is Pitora art from Gujarat. Only the male members of the tribe uh, paint and the art itself is supposed to be dating back to a thousand years and it is predominantly a cave art, a rock art or a wall art. It represents seven horses which indicate the seven hills of the area and a wavy line always passes through the painting which represents the Narmada river that flows in the area. Little Mittu just finished this painting when Bunny ran up to him and said, Bhaiya, this looks lovely. What is this? And Mittu said, it is a food web. What is a food web? I heard of cobwebs, but what is a food web? Asked Bunny. Well, food web is made up of many, many food chains of all the animals and plants living in one area or one ecosystem. Oh, said Bunny, trying to understand. Mittu smiled. Well, let me explain. Food chain always represents how energy is transferred from one organism to another organism which are living in one area or ecosystem. See, the energy from the sun is taken by the plants and plants make their own food. Yes, said Bunny, I know, by a process called photosynthesis. That is why plants are called producers. Very good, appreciated Mitto. And see, now the energy from the plants goes to plant-eating animals called herbivores. Oh, said Bunny. And then from the herbivores, the energy goes to carnivores. The deer is eaten by big cats. So, big deer is a herbivore and big cat is a carnivore. Oh, said Bunny. And try and identify one more food chain, said Mittu. So, Mitt Bunny looked at the painting and said, well, let me see. From the plant, the energy goes to the butterfly and from the butterfly to the dragonfly and from the dragonfly to the frog, then to the snake, then to the eagle, said Bunny. Very good, that's a food chain. And Bunny said, I'll find out one more food chain. Sure, said Mittu. The energy goes from the plant to the butterfly, to the dragonfly. To what? asked Bunny. Well, this is a carnivorous plant. Do carnivorous plants exist? asked Bunny. Yes, carnivorous plants eat insects and these are like sundews or venus flytraps are examples of carnivorous plants. Oh, doesn't anybody eat them? asked Bunny. Well, I haven't finished the painting yet. Carnivorous plants can also be had by herbivores. Oh, and again the chain begins, is it? Herbivore to carnivore. Yes, smiled Mittu. So what are the animals? Why isn't there an arrow above the eagle? Those are called apex predators, explained Mittu. Apex predators do not have any natural enemies. So they are safe and they are at the top of the food chain. But you drew a line from this eagle to this and from the big cat to this. What is this? Asked Bunny curiously. And then Mittu said, the energy flows from the producers to the herbivores to the carnivores and when the carnivores are dead, scavengers like vultures eat them or when plant material is dead, they are decomposers. All the dead matter in the ecosystem is cleared by decomposers. So decomposers complete the food chain. What are decomposers? Decomposers are organisms like fungi which take nutrients from the dead matter and then they consume it and again leave nutrients back to the soil for the plants to grow healthy. Oh, like earthworms? Yes, like earthworms and fungi. They are decomposers and they complete the food chain and once the food chain is over here, it begins again from the plant. Oh, said Bunny. So, the plants are the producers. The animals that eat the plants or are the herbivores or the primary consumers. Then those that eat the herbivores are the carnivores or 
the secondary consumers and when they are dead they are decomposed and cleared away by the fungi which give the nutrients back to the soil am i correct asked bunny yes but i have one doubt what is this called it is eating both the plants as well as the animals what is such an animal called she asked well that's an omnivore for you said mittu and both of them laughed and went down the end thank you for listening